Welcome to Steelfest 2018. Now we are about to enter epic levels of interest because what we have here is a multi-talent and I know this word gonna make him a little bit awkward but that's the point exactly here. Welcome Henu from Moonsorrow and Fintroll and many other ventures. How are you doing, mister? Awkward, thanks for asking. So, you are here to play not only with your main band, if we can use that word for Munzero, but also you can be a feature guest. Would you like them to enlighten a bit about what's going on? Well, I've been participating uh, with Satanic War Masters nice activities for some years now, and uh, when I was asked to accompany with this gig, I felt kind of honored, and of course I would like to participate on this particular gig, and so here we are, playing with Satanic Warmaster today. So, uh, you are a very busy guy with all the bands, but you also work with music, game music in particular, am I right? Yes, I work as a game music composer and music producer in general at uh, Rovio Entertainment Finland, and uh, I'm responsible for many soundtracks composed and produced myself, and uh, I'm also producing a lot of other people's music for the game soundtracks. So how all these music composing, editing, uh, producing and, you know, helping other bands select sounds because you're known as kind of a looming shadow, giving tips and hints to other bands. How do you manage to have schedule for all this? Uh, it all goes down to a very, very understanding wife. But uh, I think in general I'm very organized and uh, sometimes I also tend to just do things and suffer the consequences a bit later. So are there priorities when it comes to music? Yes, there are priorities. Priorities are deadlines and that's about it. I technically, everything is pretty much agreeable at my work with clients and with my bands. So it's all about deadlines in the first place. There are musicians who have multiple bands and you know they have different priorities when doing festivals, gigs and whatnot. Uh, do you have sort of an agreement that this band always comes first or is it first in first out? Uh, as I don't play much gigs or festivals in general, I don't have sort of a priority list in that sort of sense. So for what it comes in general schedules, it's pretty much first First come, first served. And uh, everything else needs to be agreed otherwise. All right. So here we are more to talk about Moonsor than Fintroll, but I think both bands are, you know, uh, well known and they definitely have their places in the world. But certainly we have people who don't know jack shit about those bands. So in order to kind of give you, give these people around a brief description, how would you, you know, sell your band? And I'm, I'm talking about sell out, but you know, like this band plays this and that. And for Moonsorrow, it would be Moonsorrow is uh, it's a movie soundtrack without the movie, played with screechy instruments, located in prehistoric Scandinavia. And for Fintroll, it would be. A mariachi festival in hell. So, uh, we have a strong thrall theme here today uh, for having Mortis as the headliner of today. But Fintroll is also a troll band of sorts. Are you a different breed or just different face with the same uh, sub race? Well, I think we kind of skip the industrial need fame and money phase at all and we kind of went to the other direction so we started to completely peace on our own legacy so in that sort of sense we're a different breed of trolls in that sense we don't really we don't really give a shit but both bands have uh, more or less interest in fantasy folklore history and whatever and uh, you also mentioned that some of you guys you being in particular interesting in uh, fantasy games such as World and World of Warcraft and whatnot, how do these cope with each other? Does uh, playing fantasy games support your creativity when creating music, or are they just two different worlds with nothing to do with each other? They are absolutely from the same world and planet, all of them, and pretty much everything I do tends to circle within a certain 
certain bubble where I come from and where I draw inspiration from and it's all tied together between fantasy, real history and uh, everything in, in between. But I find the real world boring and uh, oppressive and kind of a hard enough so I like to that was my daughter from this life these are sometimes the moments that can totally surprise like flat-footed how do we react we react a bit embarrassingly most of all rather awkwardly smiling and trying to get with a witty comment quickly before the moment goes away so this serves very well a bridge to our youth. When we were young, so we, we, did, we didn't have kids and, you know, things were very different, you know, talking about 90s, all the black metal and all the Viking fantasy folk metal and all that stuff. But things have changed with parenthood and, you know, becoming an adult working citizen. How has it changed your life when it comes to having a band or even more than one band? Well, it's just I think it's more about priorities. The The biggest hit that the bands take usually is the fact that the albums are coming way, way... Uh, there there are way bigger gaps between albums than there used to be in the early 2000s, let's say. But because it's just... Uh, it's pretty much only because of the time is so short. With having all the mundane, boring things like going to the food shop, moving the lawn and taking the kids to the whatever kindergarten, spring festival. It just takes time and you, you just need to do a lot of boring adult stuff. So you can't concentrate 100% to the bands. And I think it's, it should be completely acceptable. I think if you are really, really just breathing for your bands when you're close to 40 years old, you're doing something wrong. But just, that's just my opinion. I totally agree, and uh, there was this talk about like how kind of a certain level of mysticism has kind of vanished when we know more and more about people uh, in the background. I mean, you know, talking about like 90s, when all these guys behind their bands, they were just, you know, faces with corpse paint on and having these awkward or weird uh, artist names. And nowadays, you can just go to a festival. Oh, hi there, Peter. Hi there, Eric. Hi there, whoever you are. And there is not that level of mysticism. But has this affected your, uh, say, creativity and band life at all? I think it's a bit too edged sword in a way that I technically, I like to uh, represent somehow in the internet and most likely on Twitter. I don't, my Facebook stuff and all that. So those are the two only social media platforms I use. And my Facebook is only strictly for people I know and it's my personal Facebook. And uh, I'm more involved in band activities on the Twitter side. But uh, it's more of a like a hybrid mishmash between me as a composer and music producer and me as a band member. So whoever wants to follow me on Twitter, it's like uh, pick your poison. I'm gonna write on both sides and aspects of music. And uh, otherwise I tend to keep my uh, personal things rather private. But of course I would like sometimes to give some sort of a, like a, a glimpse to my life for people who are interested. For example, I might say that, okay, this is rather funny. Today I was first uh, working, doing some stuff with my kids and then I went straight to mixing a black metal album at home. So it's kind of a, I tend to draw some jokes about controversy, like uh, this Jekyll and Hyde kind of a thing. But uh, otherwise I tend to keep, keep it rather private, especially for, the more deeper we go, the more private I want to be on those matters. I can say some mundane things and just general, just scratching the surface kind of a thing. Yes, I have kids. Many people have kids, so it's not a surprise. Many Africans have kids, so it's not like I'm having a prize on that, having kids. Your cousin uh, once, a few years ago, uh, had this kind of a thing going on. I think it was related to Moon Server back then, but... I'm not totally sure, but anyway, he was having this kind of a problem that private life and uh, kind of a band life were getting kind of a mixed too much, and he had to basically create a new Facebook profile in order to, you know, separate this band life and persona from the kind of a followership. 
and I don't know how it went. Actually, I think it went well, but it's just a kind of a thing that is too easy to suddenly happen, and then you figure out, oh crap, there are stalkers and two enthusiastic fans and people all over. Well, uh, yeah, I think uh, in that particular case, it kind of went a bit too far, and I understand completely why Villa did exactly what he did. In my case, I've never... I'm not very, like, a strong Facebook user in a way that... Uh, I, I tend to keep it like... Uh, I do have friends there, which I have had to accept uh, all those friend requests, uh, which are cl more close to work and uh, kind of a networking sort of things but uh for what it comes to people i have no clue who they are but uh they are just having a long hair and they come from chile or something i'll just basically do not accept because uh, i want to keep my profile private in a way that there should be nothing uh if i want to share something to people i care or i'm a quant i'm acquainted with. Uh, I, I only want to share them th with those people and not some random people I've not ever met. So I've never accepted people I don't yet know for Facebook, for example. And I, as I don't use any other platforms, well, of course, Twitter, but that there you cannot, you, you can't really choose who's following you. And World of Warcraft. Mm, I'm not really sure how that relates to that shit, but I mean, for example, if there is like enthusiastic fan, which is now a little bit uh, me messy and offended, like, oh my God, I cannot send this guy, uh, you know, this friend request because he basically said that it's not okay. But can I, you know, befriend him on World of Warcraft? I'm raiding too and I have legendary and epic set. It's really easy. Do I raid with you? Yes or no? If yes, do I raid with you regularly? Do we actually speak on Discord? As we're all these questions and uh, you probably can add me to your friend just like I could add you so it's not like rocket science people so, add each other if they know each other at least somehow so the final question or see my final question as he always is with Rauta is that what is rocket science except for rocket science now that was a trick question so what are your expectations for rest of the steel fest and the coming year when it comes to gigs and festivals well to be completely honest my biggest expectation for me to the steel fest is to stay sober enough which is really hard in this sort of environment not that i'm having any problems with alcohol but it's too easy in a very this sort of an atmosphere where the sun is shining and friends are everywhere it's too easy to just sit and drink beer and just skip all the bands and you probably know what I'm talking about. I do most definitely do. Mm. Word to the wise, the last words. Play World of Warcraft, it's good. And this is an excellent excuse for us to stop talking. World of Warcraft, probably the best game I've ever played and all the good guys know that shit. And like Henu said, well, come to Finland and you're gonna be drunk or then you're doing something very, very wrong. Rauta out.